All right, well, welcome David Huff to In Conversation With. Thanks so much for joining me. It's so nice to see you. Great to see you too. Wait, it's, it's a drag that we have to do it via computer, not in person. I know. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You know, one must adapt to the current climate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for people who don't know, David Huff, Dave, you are actually one of my producers from Nashville yep. with quite an illustrious career. I mean, I'm just looking at the wall behind you, so oh, yeah. fair few, fair few parts there, Dave, just a few. But why don't you tell like everyone who's watching sort of a little bit more about you? Okay. Well, I don't know who's interested, but. You know, I mean, I, I have been in music since high school, and it's been a long time. I mean, I've, it's been a long time ago. So mm -hmm. I started playing drums on records as a freshman in high school and just kind of just kept going. I, you know, as soon as I graduated high school, I uh, a year after I graduated high school, I moved to California, and I, I toured all over the world a couple different times. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and I feel like I've had a couple different careers. I was a, I was a studio drummer, touring drummer. Mm -hmm. And then I started, um, I was in a band with my brother, Dan Huff. We started a band named Giant. Yeah, I remember the photos of your hair. Yeah, I had really long, I have long hair now because of, because of the, uh, you know, quarantine. But so do I, it needs a cut. It was a lot longer on my head back, back then. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, did that. And, then, and then, you know, with the change of, of scenery and music and the kind of music we were doing, uh, we, we just got back into studio world started writing started doing some production and, mm -hmm. and so i had a couple of different like so I've, I've kind of done everything in music except for i don't manage and i guess yourself and your brother obviously have quite the name in music and in nashville and in particular in country music but i know that you did a lot of like r&b and hip-hop prior to going back into country music so when you look back at that who are the artists that you have loved to work with in the studio in terms of producing and in terms of being a session musician? Well, you first. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I'll pay you later, Dave. I'll pay you later. <laughs> oh, I, I, I actually, I love the challenge of, of trying to work with different artists. I love it because it, it, every artist is different. Every artist needs something yeah. different. And I've always been kind of, of the mindset that, that I don't have a particular, I don't think I have a particular sound. I just, I try to adapt to who the artist yeah. is. And, and I always appreciated that when I worked with really good producers, I was, I was, I was very lucky. I got to work with a lot of great producers as a young, young 20, in my young twenties, you know, and I just sponged up everything. And, I, and the best ones were the ones that, that could, they could take any artist and, and make, make their songs, you know, yeah. to them. You know? So, so that's why I can. I mean, I, I love working with every kind of artist. I love. You can name drop. It's okay. Give me, give me some names that you've worked with that people will be accustomed to know. Well, I, I thought okay, I worked with a lot of country artists and, and some pop ones. I, I thought one really cool thing I did, I got a chance to do. I worked with a guy named Avicii. Mm -hmm. rest, rest in peace. But um, I got to work on Hey Brother, his pop version that they wanted to make in, into, uh, they wanted to adapt to the pop country world. So mm -hmm. I got to redo pretty much everything except for, you know, Dan Tomiski's vocals. And I thought that was, that was a really cool challenge. And it was, it was amazing working with him. He's, he's a freaking genius. He, I don't know most people know Avicii. He wrote, hey brother, he wrote that song. It wasn't like he sampled something. Like, like a lot of DJs will sample things and he wrote that thing. So, so th th that kid was. Yeah. So I mean, so I get to do stuff like that. I, I um, I get to Lady Annabellum. Yeah, Keith Urban. I mean, um, I got to work. Who with doesn't him. love Keith? I mean, come on, he's like he's like one of the best ever. I think mean, yourself and your brother. There, there was a period in time, and you know that was one of the reasons that I requested you guys for me. And of course, through was lucky enough to get you both was because of the Keith Urban albums that yourself and you know your brother in particular just blitzed i mean that, that's he, he's, 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 a, he's one of those geniuses too he's one of those artists that you you know who he is he's true to his brand yeah so, you know i mean so so 
don't know if I answered your question, but I mean, I love I love R and B stuff. I I've worked in in the rap world in in Atlanta and in Houston. The late night boys that you're in like the studio until God knows what hour. Me, I was the early bird. Our studio sessions didn't go past like six p.m. <laughs> well, we like that now. I mean, I remember working with a rap artist down in Miami, and they didn't start till eleven at night. So, so, and then, and you know, four or five in the morning is usually when you stop. I'm like, man, that's, yeah. that's not, that's not yeah. my life. You know, but but I mean, it's interesting. It's kind of it was cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, adapt to it. you know what in this in this music business you have to adapt oh you have to how do you feel like at the moment obviously no one's able to um tour so no one's really essentially making money in the music industry it's null and void almost how do you think it's going to adapt do you think it's going to take that bigger hit that it will be difficult to recover i think you know in terms of labels they're losing dollars pretty you know they're hemorrhaging money yeah. but do you think it'll just pick right up when it comes back or do you think it's going to be a, a slow burn to yeah, that's, that's a great question um i mean you look at look at the airlines you know they they i think i heard today that they they have lost like 90 percent of their business yeah that's, yeah i think it's universal i think everybody is is well, not everybody there's exceptions obviously but i think most people have just come to almost a grinding stop music look music doesn't always doesn't ever stop i don't think i think there's just ways to to create new music the streaming world i think is going to become way more important yeah it's probably been important but it's going to become way more important in the future mm. and and uh yeah i don't i mean it's hard to predict it's hard i mean national the national scene has had I feel like Nash has taken this massive hit in 2020. You had the tornado to begin with, which yeah, was devastating yeah, to Nashville, was. East Nashville and downtown. And then coronavirus. And then I believe that there was another tornado like a week or something ago. Yeah. It, it wasn't considered a tornado, but, but they had winds of 70 miles an hour. And there are trees down everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been very different um yeah. Nashville is a very unique place musically it's a great music community um everything the all this all the you know labels sh shut down um the uh, the union so all the everything stopped and they encourage everybody you know not to not to work you know, the pause button. yeah but but you can i mean with technology look what we're doing i mean we, we've i've done a couple sessions via you know via zoom yeah and, Thank but, God for Zoom, right? It's like yeah, yeah, a lifeline at the moment. Yeah, and, and we we've been able to work. I've worked with artists, you know, in the past couple of years, all over the all over the globe, and and you can send files, you can actually get stuff, and you can listen in real time when you mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's easy. I think you know when we were recording last year, like I was so insistent on having everyone in the studio in particular for the tracking days of course because i wanted that camaraderie i wanted that that feel of bouncing but essentially most musicians and most artists are, everything's online someone's recording in you know on the east coast and someone's doing that on the west coast and it's all being filtered through online so i guess you know when you look at it one of the major places that's taking the hard hits are the places that are like the bigger recording studios like your blackbird which is such um a historical and amazing place to record but yet it's taking a really big hit because people are using home studios and and so well, forth you know, yeah yeah but i mean they, they also have an, a, a university attached to that which is which is yeah it's the academy yeah great helping kids that don't have you know the, the access at a young age like growing up I, we were like we grew up in the studio so we we got to know, know it from, from early yeah. age but but i mean yeah it's, it's national's a unique place because because they still i said they we still track with everybody in the room and it's it's yeah. been very odd to stop i mean you know and, and you know i i get i work with my brother you, you know usually every at least every week for the yeah. last 12 years every week and mm -hmm. it's just weird not working. Yeah. Okay, you know, and we can't even see him. And we, we got to see him not too long ago. 
you know, yeah. you know but through so, glass. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. And, and everybody's being careful. I th they just opened up the studios. They're experimenting. They just started this, this okay. week. So, but everybody's in well, What worries me about like the mics, because you know how close we are as artists to mics. Yeah. Like they're yeah. not the most sanitary of things to begin with. Well, I, I'm, I'm not on this session. I just I saw it from some friends. Yeah, it's not sanitary, but I can't even imagine every. You know, it's first of all, I'm claustrophobic in a mask when we have to go out. I, I, yeah, me but, too. I get in the car and I have it like straight under my chin straight away. So it's, it's horrible. So I don't know how it's gonna it's gonna translate. And obviously, you can't wear gloves if you're if if, if you're a drummer, maybe but not a guitar player. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know how it's, how it's going to happen. And I mean, hopefully yeah. we can get back to some sort of normal, you know. Yeah. And going like going forward, I guess, who would be an artist that you've been dying to work with that would just be, who would be like your dream artist to work with? Oh, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I don't know how to answer that because I, you know, I love, I, I would, okay, I, let me, I'll answer that. I, I would love to work with Kanye. Okay. And don't ask me why. I, I, I know he's a <laughs> creative dude and either people, he's a unique guy. People either love him or they don't. I think that's part of the, that's part of the, the genius of any creative is yeah. that if someone, if someone kind of like borderline is, I guess, a, a mass liking, they don't tend to be the ones that have that longevity that stick around. I think you need to have that something special, that, that intrigue or that, um, you know, artists in general are, are pretty alternate type of people to begin with. You know, you have to have something a little different, a little eccentric maybe. Well, I mean, we, you, absolutely. It's, it, we're all eccentric in a way if we're artistic. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, I mean, it, it's all subjective. So, yeah. so somebody sees that wall and go, ah, I don't like it. Other people go, oh my gosh, that's the best thing I've ever seen. So what I like about Kanye, I, I, I always, I've always loved his early stuff, but when he, when he moved into the gospel world, um, I, I just, I thought it opened up to more or something that I feel like I could work with him because, because he's, he's now he's more, in, I mean, in that project, he's more into songs and of course. I, just think, I just think having those kind of like those melodic parts but with his genius rap I mean I just kind yeah. of yeah so. I mean I still love it I loved when he was doing his collaborations with you know Jay-Z and Rihanna yeah. at that time and you know run the town gosh I used to like crank that song <laughs> touch the sky I'm like yeah and, and I say it because I I love R&B music I've done I worked on a lot of records in my I know you do and I do a lot of programming matter of fact when you talk about um Blackbird Studio, John and Martina are very dear friends. Martina was the first country artist I worked with when I moved back to California to Nashville. You know and, how I love those two. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 they're family. I mean, and, and, and I was putting 808s in her music all the way back in 1990 when I met her. You were ahead of your time. I mean, you look back at 2009, 2019, sorry. Gosh, I'm like losing it here. Um, and the biggest song of 2019 was what a country song clicked with, with, I mean, Old Town Road. You know, that was like the perfect marriage of two genres of music that just exploded. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that, that's what I love about, you know, I, I look back and kind of analyze where music has gone country. I've always, I grew up in Nashville. I love country music. But You're I love a Tennessee country. boy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, and so with the, with the invention of the iPod, that changed the game. For, I think for country, it, because you listen to a you know a, a, you name a, like a, a George Strait song, and then back to back with a, with a Jay Z song, and, and yeah, and, and they were neither. You one think historically, one. like Tennessee, ha obviously had Memphis. There was very big like blues and jazz and and Motown. You know, from that sort of deep south area as well. So I guess it was always going to be around you, you know, that kind of that kind of culture. Obviously it's not like a New York or a Detroit or, you know, or even LA, obviously that seems very different. And then you've got your Hispanic community that add in like the Latin sounds and, and so forth. So 
Well, it's the country is adapted. Country music is adapted. Yeah. To yeah. Pop. It, it, it's all cyclical. It, 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 it goes in and around and, and it's reinvents itself in a good way. But it's mm-hmm. always about great songs. That's what that's what I love about Nashville. The songs are just yeah. when, when we were when we were recording here, we like the songwriters are just they're unsung. Oh. You know, like you know, there's they're stars to me. You know, because yeah. what they can do. Well, as you know, John McBride and you know, you and I and everyone was all were always saying that you know, you can have a great artist, but if you don't have a great song, it's it's a needle in a haystack. Yep, that's a secret. Yeah. yeah. That's a secret to success, great song. Yeah, like Tim McGraw being like the best A and R guy for himself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well no, done, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully things will get back to, I mean, to, to where, you know, I, I hope everybody, you know, it, it's hard to stay safe and, you know, even know what's going on. I don't think any, yeah. everyone really knows yeah. exactly what's going on, but, but, you know, Nashville's starting to open up their studios very slowly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this, this week is, is in particular, they started doing stuff. And, and uh, so, you know, we'll see, we'll see how, how it goes. Okay. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed things will get moving. I mean, you know, the world needs music. I do know that. And we need yeah. Music makes the world go around, you know. It's, What's it's, that again? It's, music makes the world go around. I think it's one of the things that we've relied on most during this time, you know, to keep your spirits high, to, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I just cut a uh, song on an artist, Kate Clark, and, yeah. during, and, and experimented with this, with this uh, quarantine, which is to do the entire thing. Amazing artist. Incredible new artist. Yeah, and, and we, watch. yeah, absolutely. And we, we, we did a cover song, a Pharrell song, who's, who's I love Pharrell, and mm-hmm. we did a song for Happy. And just because, uh, you know, picked a song because a lot of friends and people were just so depressed of yeah. all the news. And, yeah. you know, you had to find something music, to, to, you know. And, music is the thing we need during this time so much, for sure. Big time. For sure. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I miss you, and everyone at the studio. Man, I, I, we we need to get back in the studio. I, I, I don't I don't like recording it with you know in distance. We will, we will. Perhaps not 2020, but you know I'm gonna have like so much material ready for like 2021. Good, good. Just like bang it out. <laughs> get one of those hazmat. We'll get all the suits and, and we'll we'll get a. Yeah. You know, We'll get a mister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. well, thank you again so much for coming on. It's it's been a pleasure and even just a lovely catch up, you know, regardless. Elizabeth, thank you for having having me and please stay safe and and uh, plan on let's let's put it in the books. Let's plan on uh, January. Let's let's just put this to say it. Put in universe. I'm penciling it in. I'm penciling it in now. Yeah. <laughs> And Have you a good same too, and much love to the family and, and everyone. I'll tell them. Thank you so much, Libby. My pleasure. Much love. <laughs> you too.